My name is Usha Mandia. I'm a senior technical writer at Docker. Welcome to the session Docs as Code. In this session, I would like to give you an overview of what Docs as Code is and how we follow this practice at Docker. We'll also take a look at how we build and run Docs as containers. There will be a short demo where we update a file within the Docs repository and build and run Docs as a container and verify all the changes locally. Finally, I would like to introduce you to dev environments. Dev environments allow team members to share in-progress work and accelerate the entire collaboration process. There will also be a short demo where we can go through the entire dev environments workflow. So let's get started. What exactly is Docs as code? Docs as code is a practice of using the same tools and workflow as your code. This means we create, manage, and publish documentation similar to an application. This allows documentation teams to better integrate with the dev teams. This also enables developers and other stakeholders within the organization to contribute directly to documentation. Docs as code typically involves having source files in a version control system, tracking work requests through an issue tracker, using plain text markup for writing content, and instead of enterprise authoring tools, using a text editor such as Notepad or an IDE such as VS Code, and having static site generators such as Hugo or Jekyll, and some validation scripts or CI CD pipelines to ensure the builds are safe and the entire environment is not impacted by any new change. So let's see how this maps to what we do at Docker. At Docker, we have all our source files in a public GitHub repository. This means anyone can see all the source files in our repository and also contribute to our documentation through pull requests. We also track our internal requests through Jira. We write in Markdown, and I use VS Code because it better integrates with my workflow. However, you can use any uh, text editor, as I mentioned earlier, like from Notepad or Notepad++. And we have configured GitHub Actions as our CI CD pipeline. Our site is built through Jekyll, like that is a static uh, site generator. And we have Nginx and CloudFront configured as CDN. We use Nginx which um, serves our docs locally, so our, serves our docs site locally when we build docs locally as a container. And we have CloudFront on the cloud site. So this is um, a preview or an insight into how we use docs as code within Docker. So let's see how we build and run docs as containers. Building docs as containers involve three key components. Docker file, Docker Compose and Docker Desktop. A Docker file contains instructions on how to build and run documentation as a container. It contains information about how to set up base images, how to fetch some upstream resources. So for example, some of our CLI reference docs are fetched from upstream CLI repository. So we do not have those uh, source files in our docs repository, but we fetch those files from an upstream repository. All that is defined in a Docker file. It also contains instructions on the Jekyll environment itself. And Docker Compose takes the instructions from a Docker file and builds and runs our documentation as a container. Once we have the container, the docs container up and running, we can then use the intuitive user interface within Docker Desktop to see the changes. It's just a click of a button in Docker Desktop to see our output. Docker Desktop also allows us to perform lifecycle operations on the container, such as starting and stopping a container, or even restarting or deleting the container itself. So why don't we actually go to the docs repository and see these files? As I said, our docs um, our source files are in a GitHub repository. This is uh, docker.github.io is the repository we have. 
and the docker file is located at the root of the docs repository. It contains a series of instructions as I mentioned earlier. So it contains information about the development environment and the image that it's using and some information about the upstream resources like where we fetch content from upstream branches and then the Jekyll environment itself. There are uh, comments within the Docker file that can help you understand what's happening at each stage. Let's go and take a look at our Docker Compose file. Our Docker Compose file contains instructions on the Jekyll environment and the image name which we'll be using and then the port number. So once the docs um, are built as containers, we can go to localhost and point it to port 4000 and see all the changes. So why don't we go and make a change to one of the files in the docs repository and see how all these comes together. Let me go and open my item and make sure I'm on my demo branch. Yes, uh, it looks correct. So now I'm going to make an update. So we have this text above our search field, which says, what can we help you find? I'm going to update this text. So I'll go to VS Code. And then, um, so we have the learning.html file, which has this information, uh, the text here. I'm going to replace that with Let me increase that a bit so you can, yeah. So I've updated this text here. I would also like to add an image. So let me go and add an image. So I have the demo.png image here, which I'm going to copy into the images folder here. And then I'm going to specify that here. So I'm going to save this and then we will use Docker Compose to um, uh, run this update as a container so we can see the changes live. So I'll go back to the item again and run the command. So as you can see, it um, goes through a series of instructions that we have defined in the Docker file. Uh, which is uh, here and then yeah it, it's fetching some upstream resources and then it started generating or building our docs as a container. So um, the generation of the docs is complete and now I have a message here which says the docs has been recreated. I can now go to docker desktop to see the output. So let me open docker desktop. As you can see we have the docker github.io um, compose application running if we expand it, it contains detailed information about um, the container. It contains information about the port and you can click um, the buttons here, the icons, open in a browser or the CLI or even perform lifecycle operations that has um, stop this container and then restart. Or you can actually click this um, container to see some details. Um, you can inspect the details of the container as, and see some stats. So let's go back and expand it and then click this icon here, which opens our output in a browser. So it opens um, on localhost 4000. So yes, I have my update here and the image. So once I'm happy with the changes, um, we will create a PR. So I uh, just wanted to mention that this is how we build docs as containers locally to verify the changes. Once, um, once we're all happy with the updates, uh, we will create a PR in the docs GitHub repository, which, which kicks off a series of checks. So I told, mentioned about CI/CD pipelines earlier and said we use GitHub Actions. So all that is defined on the Actions tab here, where there are multiple like checks that happen depending on what, um, depending on the event. So let me show you the code for these. These are located in the GitHub folder here, and then workflows. So there are um, multiple events. For example, whenever a PR is created, 
a series of checks um, will be kicked off to ensure uh, it doesn't break any of our build and our environment. So all that is defined in the build PR workflow. And then if we look at the build master, this, uh, this happens when a PR is merged to the master branch. So uh, that is like the trigger. And then what it does um, is it copies all the static files to the staging site. So if you can see, it goes, it puts to the S3 on the staging site. So, um, and, and also uh, there are some credentials, AWS credentials defined here. And then we have configured a webhook, which adds a message in Slack notifying us um, about, you know, publishing it on the staging site. So this is uh, another workflow we have. And then there is the finally the prod built published. So merging a PR doesn't put um, publish the content. So we have an additional workflow which takes uh, all the chunks of updates from the master branch and we convert it. We add a PR which takes it to the published branch. So that is defined here. So um, when a PR is merged to published, it kicks off these checks. This is very similar to the previous workflow we saw, which is um, copying the files to the staging site and kicking off those builds, except that uh, this time it puts all the static files into the prod site. Uh, similar AWS credentials added here. And then, um, so it adds this message, successfully published docs, again, which is a web webhook we have configured. Um, so it uh, there will be a message that appears on Slack. So you don't have to know, wait or just go and hit refresh. So all that um, is configured uh, and you know it, it happens automatically once the, once the staging site is live. So that is uh, the GitHub Actions part. As I said, like you know, we um, at Docker, let's go back to the slide. So um, we use docs as code and also the, the philosophy, the, the docs as code philosophy and also uh, building docs as containers to better integrate with the teams. And it has helped us uh, streamline our processes and work very similar to the dev teams so we can better integrate and you know efficiently work um, on updating the docs. So let's uh, take a look at dev environments next. Dev environments allow a smoother workflow by enabling team members to share in-progress content. So even before I go and create a PR for my changes, I can share all the changes with my team members, my product manager or other stakeholders. This allows me to uh, verify the changes even before creating a PR in public. Basically, um, dev environments put all the code, your content updates into a container and then creates an image out of it and then pushes it to Docker Hub. It gives an image name, which you can then share it with your team members. When your team member pulls this image from Docker Hub, they will be um, able to see all the changes that you have made, generate output based on the changes, and even suggest updates to the same file and then share it on Docker Hub. You can then pull the same image and then verify these changes. This, uh, this entire process makes the collaboration part of um, the development workflow or the docs development workflow much easier. This is very helpful in scenarios where um, I need to share updates even before some content goes public. So let's go and take a look at how it all works in Docker Desktop. And even before we go there, I'd like to mention that Dev Environments is currently an experimental feature. You can download the latest version of Docker Desktop um, to start playing with Dev Environments. So let's go to Docker Desktop and see the changes. So this is my Docker Desktop. I can see my dev environments tab here. Uh, I'm on my dev environments. As you can see, there is a container running. So I got this container by cloning a project. So you can add the URL of your GitHub repository here and clone the project, or you can use the, the image name that your team member has shared and then add it here to clone their project. And I have everything here. So I'm going to click uh, the VS Code option here and see what happens. So um, as you can see, it opens a container instance, uh, like a VS Code instance within a container, which lets me update, make updates to the files. So uh, I have opened the same landing page.html and uh, let's make a small update here. Instead of what can we help you find, I would say, and then save it. 
I go to the terminal, let me move this here, and then run the command to generate output. So uh, that shouldn't take long. It should um, give us the link that we can just click from this terminal and see the changes live. So uh, that's pretty much done. So we can just click on this link here to verify our changes. So yes, we have our changes here. Uh, I'm happy with it. However, I would like to share it with my product manager and my dev teams to see whether they are happy with all the updates I've made. So uh, I do this by clicking on the share icon. So you click here and then provide the Docker ID, which is the username, um, and then the name of the repository. And then click share. So uh, what it does is it takes all my changes, including all the files within the repository, and it puts it into a container and creates an image out of it. So, and then this image is being uploaded to Docker Hub. And finally, when that part is done, Docker Desktop prints the name of the image, which I can use, which I can copy and then share it with my team members. When my team members take a look at, like, you know, uh, use that within, uh, use that image name here and then click start, they clone the entire project and they can see all the updates I have made. They can even make some more updates to the same file and then share it with me using the share option. So this part, um, this sharing in progress content part make the collaboration so much easier within the dev teams and uh, the docs teams as well and help us better coordinate with each other even before we put out our PRs in public. So let's wait for that to give us the URL. It uh, might take a little bit of time. Let's just uh, wait a minute or so. So our dev container has been pushed and Docker Desktop has given me this image name, which I can copy and share it with my team members. So um, once you send it, your team members can um, use it and then add it to the dev environments tab uh, in this field. So uh, when they add it, it clones the entire project into there um, and, and opens a remote container where they can see all my changes and generate output. So um, that's uh, kind of the end of the dev environments demo. Um, so let's, let's go back. Yeah, and um, oh, uh, I would like to see what it looks like in Docker Hub. So even before we go there. So let's go to Docker Hub. So I'm in my uh, dev environments demo page. As you can see, it has, um, it has uploaded uh, the image. Let's just give it a minute. So uh, it has pushed the image and uh, the latest image here and it's it's available. And then, um, yeah, so uh, it has, it's uploaded as an image uh, which your team members can pull. So um, yeah, that's the end of our dev environment uh, demo and also the docs as code session. Hopefully this has given you an insight into how we use docs as code practice and use Docker um, technology within Docker to build and run docs as containers. And uh, I, I hopefully you, will also, you have also seen how we use the experimental features. The, the previous one which you saw, which is use, running uh, docs as containers using Docker Compose is our existing workflow. However, we are trying out uh, the new workflow which is using dev environments because it's making, um, it will make us so much easier, the collaboration part so much easier with that. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.